putting together the computer. In this section, we will put together a desktop computer and cover some basic practices to take when putting together a computer as well as tips to follow when taking apart a laptop. With the help of the previous sections, we have picked out and bought all the parts we want in our computer. We have saved a lot of money by buying all the parts and deciding to put the computer together ourselves. Now the hard part is done and all we need to do is learn how to put together all the parts. If we did our planning well and got all the right parts that go together, this will be a piece of cake. If we are missing some parts or got the wrong part, then this is where we will figure out that the wrong part was purchased very quickly. Also, if the case we got did not come with enough screws or the right screws, we will figure it out here as well. So let's get started. First, I will briefly go through the parts that we should have bought to put together a basic computer. We will need a CPU, a heatsink for the CPU, a hard drive, RAM, a DVD player, a mouse, a keyboard, a power supply, probably a video card if we want to play some video games or do 3D things, a motherboard, a power cord which usually comes with the power supply, a computer case, and an anti-static wristband. The anti-static wristband is not necessarily needed and I've never really actually used one to put together a computer, but it should be worn to be really careful and really safe that you will not damage the components as you put them together. Anti-static wristbands can be bought off eBay for about $3 or so, very cheap and well worth it if you live in a static area that would make you shock your finger every time you touch a doorknob or a faucet. The anti-static wristband, to be effective, needs to have the loop placed on the wrist and tightened so that the metal contact is touching the skin and have the other clip part put on the power supply somewhere, either on the fan part here or maybe the holes over here, just some place where it holds on to the power supply really well and makes good contact with metal. The cord also needs to be plugged into the power supply and then into the wall at all times so that the static from your body can be discharged into the wall socket instead of being discharged into the electrical components which could damage them or destroy them. Perhaps the most important thing when putting together a computer is to make sure your hand is completely dry and oil free. This means wash and dry your hands thoroughly before you touch any of the computer parts. Any little bit of water that is left over from washing the hands or from other places can destroy the computer after the computer has been turned on. Also, try not to spit or drool on the computer when putting it together because that could also destroy the computer. And I know there's going to be at least one person out there that's like, oh, my computer's so awesome, drool, drool, drool. So I thought I should mention this. If somehow water oil from your fingers or liquid of some kind does get on a part of the computer, dry out that part completely and thoroughly before turning on the computer. Liquid will only damage the electronics of the computer after the computer has been turned on. This is because the liquid does not do any physical damage to the computer part. But when the electricity is turned on, the liquid can have electricity flow through the liquid, making electricity flow where it is not supposed to go. Any wrong places the electricity flows will be damaged forever, making the electronic device never work again. And with all the millions of little wires on any circuit board nowadays, the probability of electricity flowing to some wrong place if water has been dropped onto an electrical component is relatively high. As far as the computer hurting you goes, it might hurt you from you pricking your finger on a sharp corner, cutting or having some part of the case fall on your foot and squish it, but getting hurt from the electricity going through the computer would be next to impossible. The only part that has any real chance of shocking you is the electrical part sealed within the power supply. There is no reason to open the power supply at all, so just don't open the power supply at all because there's no reason to open it, and you should have no chance of shocking yourself. Before we get deep into putting together a desktop computer, here are some tips to help someone who would like to take apart their laptop for upgrading, cleaning the fan, or replacing a broken part, or pretty much for any other reason. For most laptops, when upgrading something like a hard drive or RAM, it is very easy. Sometimes one screw is all that needs to be taken out to replace the hard drive or the RAM. 
The second biggest reason someone might want to take apart their laptop might be to clean the dirt that builds up on the heatsink in the laptop. When too much dust builds up on the heatsink, the laptop cannot remove all the heat that comes off the CPU.